Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with the best and worst series of 2018 tag. <laughs> this tag was created by Mara from Books Like Whoa. I'll leave her channel link down below as well as the original tag video in which I am tagged. She's a fantastic booktuber. I highly recommend her channel, especially if Unlike me, you read a lot more lit fic. Um, she reads a lot more like uh, murder mysteries. Um, she also reads some like fantasy. Basically, she reads more diversely than I do, so she's better. So she created this tag, which is basically kind of like all these list videos that I was like, should I, shouldn't I? They're kind of, I might do one other list video that like doesn't quite get incorporated into these questions, but it's basically like end of year, like wrap up type questions of like the best and worst type of deal. But all to do with books that are in a series, which in my case is like 99.9% .9 of what I read. So like, it's basically just best and worst of the year because everything that I read is a part of a series pretty much. I'm currently sipping coffee from my Peter Pan mug from Creatively Crafts. Shameless plug, even though, I mean, I rep for her, but it's not my shop. Anyway, her mugs are awesome and her shop is in the description as well as my discount code. Yep, shameless plugging, that's me. Also, I have not thought this through at all because the books for my answers are over here on this lovely coffee table, side table, end table, table, and uh, there's no space for my coffee. So let's see how this goes. Lately, I've just been winging it with all my answers for, for, like, for serious, what am I gonna do with this coffee? Oh, I could put it on the stand that I have my mic on like that's a terrible idea. It is a terrible idea. Ooh. Okay, there's kind of some space back. Oh, I'm gonna forget that it's there though, and I'm gonna knock it over. Uh, okay, maybe drink it really fast. It's really hot. Oh god. Okay. Okay. What am I gonna do? Mm, that's kind of out of reach, but uh, oh god, it's so hot. Oh, I'm gonna forget that it's there, and it's gonna get cold. <laughs> Okay, what if I should have done this before I started filming? Well, you know what? Suck it. God, I hope I'm not crushing anything. Okay. Oh boy. Ooh. My nose itches. Okay, whatever. Let's do this thing. I prepared answers for this tag. I think I was in the middle of explaining that before a coffee gate. Um, so yeah, I actually wrote down the questions and my answers. So these are not stacked in the order that the questions are. Oh, I forgot a book. <sighs> Okay, I'm gonna go get it. Okay, we got it. Ooh, everything's fine. It's only the best book. Spoilers, okay. Let's put that right on top. Take a sip of coffee, cause I earned it. Oh, so hot, okay, it's fine. More realsies this time. The best and worst series of 2018. That's the name of this thing. <clears throat> <laughs> the first question is, what is the best series that you caught up with this year that is still a work in progress? Well, one of these shouldn't still be a work in progress. The last book was supposed to come out this year, but it's fine. Oh no, it's on the bottom. Okay. Oh boy. Why? Why did I do this? Put them on the floor. Good idea. I have two for this. I have Red Rising and Nevernight. Oh, there's a sticker on this. Gross. I just hold up on the beach. The Red Rising trilogy is over and done, and I read it, and it's fantastic, and you should read it. But the Red Rising saga, which is a continuation of the trilogy, the first book was Iron Gold, which came out this year. The second book, which was supposed to come out also this year, Dark Age, is coming out next year. It got pushed to February. Now it's been pushed to July. I better not be saying that it's my most anticipated release of 2020. Because I'll be so mad. And then similar deal with Nevernight. The third book, Dark Dawn, was supposed to come out this last fall. But it got pushed back to next fall. I better not be saying that it's my most anticipated release of 2020. Because, I mean, I'll still read it. And I'll still love J. Kristoff. But I'll be miffed. Question number two. What is the best work in progress that you are still catching up with. Oh, it was on top. Oh no, I rearranged everything. Oh no. This is why I do these spur of the moment and don't have the books to hold up in my other videos. It's too much. Anyway, Nixia by Scott Rankedgen. I was, um, <coughs> second book, uh, Nixia Unleashed did come out this year and I have it and I was going to read it the moment it came out. 
and then I didn't because story of my life. Anyway, um, this is a sci-fi YA series. Um, it's not exactly like Red Rising, but there are things about it that were reminiscent of Red Rising to me. Um, but it's about like some young people. Yeah, I didn't explain the plots of Red Rising and Never Night. Do I need to? I feel like if you're watching my channel, you're very familiar or you should be already. Go read them. Anyway, next thing <laughs> is YA sci-fi. There's kids that are like from poor areas of life, socioeconomically, racially, like all these kinds of reasons. And so they've been snapped up by this corporation that needs basically young people that no one will give a shit about to go to this alien planet where they're mining this substance called Nixia. And so on the way there, there's all kinds of like training and then also you get to sort of get familiar with the corruption and some iffy goings on with the corporation that's hired them and they're in outer space. So like they can't exactly leave, they're stuck. So it's kind of high action, high suspense, um, lots of diversity and it's just really good. Um, and I'm really excited to read the second one. I just haven't because I don't even know why, but I'm really excited to read it. And I think the third one comes out next year. Question number three. What was your favorite first book in a series this year? <laughs> that was the book that I forgot. Good job, me. It's because I was lending it to someone. <gasps> the Wolf by Leo Carew. Oh my god. I have a whole review about this book on my channel that you should watch because it's so good. I mean, not my review. The book. The review is right. The book is so good. Um, in my review, I go more in depth, obviously, about what it's about. Um, this is uh, sort of historical fiction fantasy, alternate history fantasy. Um, so it's not like magic or anything, but it's a it reimagines our history where not only our homo uh, our Homo sapien ancestors survived the Ice Age, but also Neanderthal and other humanoids survived the Ice Age into the Dark Ages. So this takes place sort of during the Dark Ages, um, but there are other humanoids <laughs> walking around. It's a very like Viking vibes, even though they're not actually Vikings. I mean they're Neanderthals, but they're very Vikingy and. It's a really incredibly well-built world and story and culture and book. Very war-centric, high, like lots of politics, lots of battle, lots of war, lots of fantastic culture and world building. Great story. Love the characters. This is just an absolutely blows it out of the water debut novel. Like, oh my god, I cannot even. So, yeah, the wolf. Number four is what is the first book in a series that you read this year that you think should have just been a standalone, not a series? Radiance by Grace Draven. I think I talk about this more on Instagram than on here because I talked about it when I read it. Um, I read this book three times this year. Once for the first time. The second time because I needed a palate cleanser for another book that's on this list as one of the questions that's about what you didn't like. Um, anyway, I read it because I just like wanted something good after reading something I didn't like. And then this month, um, Bethany was reading it for the first time and I was like, oh, buddy, read it with you. She's like, didn't you just read it? twice and I was like yep <laughs> so I did already read it three times um legit like it even reads like a standalone like and it's literally like it ends and it's like and they lived happily ever after and then the epilogue is like or did they you're just like are you serious right now so I did read the second book and the second book is it's I it didn't need to happen and literally if you don't read the epilogue in this book it's a standalone straight up standalone it ends solid done the epilogue is like Meanwhile, evil things happening, and you're like, oh, okay. So, yeah, the second book is, it's not bad. It's just unnecessary and kind of boring, and it just felt like, why? <laughs> anyway, I obviously love Radiance, so I recommend reading it as a standalone, unless you just like are desperate to read more. I mean, you can, or just reread Radiance, because why not? Oh, should I explain Radiance, what it's about? <laughs> Um, this is a fantasy romance, which is unusual for me. I don't read very much romance, which is also discussed in multiple videos, including my defense of romance. But um, if all romances were like this, I would read a lot of romance. Um, it's an interspecies marriage where it's a political arranged marriage between these, uh, between this like human girl, this redhead, and then this other culture that's like bordering their nation. Um, and they're called the Okay, they're called the Kai. As you can kind of see here, like they have like grayish skin, they have fangs and claws, like they look different. And so these two meet for the first time on their wedding day and they're both like, yeah, I get it. Like it's a political marriage. You're literally not even my species. So they're not expected to procreate. They're just like spares. Like neither of them is an heir to their 
throne. They're just like cousins or younger siblings. So it's just to like solidify an alliance. And they're like, you're super gross to me because you're not my species. But they're like, you seem nice and reasonable. All we got to do is live together. That's really all that's required of us. So I like you as a person. It's very platonic, at least at first. So they're like, and super gross because you're not even my species. But can build a life with you. So they kind of get to know each other after they get married and she gets to learn about his culture and like about their food and all this stuff. And um, stuff happens and there's like war on the fringes and whatever. There's like no drama between them though. They're really reasonable. They're really like patient about getting to know each other as people and as different species. And I just, they're both wonderful. I love both of them. Like in a lot of series I'll read or a lot of romantic, um, like a lot of couples that I'll read about, that are in other stories. I'll either like him and not her or her and not him, or I'll think there's too much drama or that they're whatever. I don't know. But like these two, I think they're great. Both of them individually, they're good together. They're both rational and reasonable and totally nice. And and they're funny too. Like they're not boring milk toast. Like they make jokes with each other and they're, they have a really good healthy vibe and dynamic. And I just like hanging out with them, honestly, which is why I read it so much. Cause it's not like this story is like one that's like high suspense where you're like so many OMG moments, which the second time you read it, like it's not fun because you already know what's happening. It's just like hanging out with two people that I really see were like. So that's why I brought it three times and I will probably read it again. Okay, I know the question was about what should be a standalone and it turned into me ranting about Radiance, but you know what? You're welcome. Okay, question number five. What is your most overhyped series of the year? <laughs> the Diviners by Libba Bray. Um, I heard nothing but praise for this. Like literally, I've never heard anyone say anything negative about this book, this series, which I don't understand. I've never heard anyone criticize it ever. So I expected to love it because like the premise also sounded like something that would be interesting to me because I don't just read every book that gets praised. Like it's 1920s New York where there's people who are like clairvoyant and different types of like psychic and like that kind of thing. That sounded amazing. And it was so, it was doing too many things at once and not any of them adequately. The characters were obnoxious. Like I did not sympathize with, especially the, are you, there's several characters that you follow, but arguably the main character, which is this girl, um, she is, I wanted her to die. Like every time something bad was happening to her, I was like, good, maybe you'll die. And then I don't have to read about you anymore. She was so annoying. And like the absolutely like quintessential, like dumb YA heroine that like is stubborn for no reason, does stuff that you're like, is this going to get you in trouble? Why are you doing it? And on the one hand, I'm like, okay, that's appropriate for the age because young people are dumb. <laughs> but also I was a young person. And I did not do dumb stuff. And also more annoying than her personality, which is quite annoying. She's really selfish, is the slang. Like the author clearly like Googled every single bit of jargon and slang that was used in the 1920s and used all of it in every sentence, as many as she could throw in, like keywords for SEO. I was like, no one, I'm sure even in the age, talked like this. Nothing was like a normal word coming out of this girl's mouth, ever. It was always some weird, razzy jazzy 1920s slang. And I was just like, oh my god, nobody talks like this. <laughs> anyway, I just found it really annoying. There were parts of it that like, when it was getting kind of suspenseful and creepy, which is what I was hoping for, and which is what I'd heard, was that it is kind of creepy. And I was like, ooh, now we're getting somewhere. And then it would just be dragging and boring. And I hated everyone. I gave it like three stars because it did some cool things. The bones of the plot were pretty good. I just wish someone else had written it maybe, and, or in the characters had been different because like the premise is pretty cool. And some of the ideas were pretty cool, but overall, I was just bored and annoyed. Question, there's a lot of questions in this tag, FYI. It's gonna be a long one. Like I probably should have said that sooner, but you could just look at how long the video is. So I don't have to tell you. Question number six is what is a series that you DNF'd this year? <laughs> oh yeah. This is the one that I read and then read Radiance right after because I needed a palette cleanse. And that's Heart of the Fae by Emma Ham. I talked about that in my wrap up where I said I read this and then immediately read Radiance because I was just like, Ugh. I talked about this also in the wrap up that this was so bad, but I'm, I, it's so bad that I would normally take the time to film a rant review and I would literally like take it apart, like line by line, honestly, but because it's indie published that I don't feel comfortable 
like creating an entire video just to come out an author that's an indie author. Like if this was traditionally published, I would have filmed a rant review because it's an indie author. I'm not gonna like they're not off the hook, which is why I'm being honest and telling you that it's not good because I'm not gonna lie and say it is just because it's an indie author and I don't want people thinking that I think it's good because I don't know integrity, honesty. Like if you come to me for book opinions, I don't want to like misrepresent my opinion. So if you look at my Goodreads and you see that I gave this three stars, you'll be like, oh, I guess she kind of liked it. I was being generous with my star rating because it's an indie author. I would give this one star if it was traditionally published. Yeah, so I feel that's kind of the compromise I've struck with myself. I'm not going to film an entire rant review, but I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to not tell you that it's bad because it is really bad. Yeah, this, what was the question? First book in a series idea NFT. Yeah, this is technically part of a duology in she's written and then in addition to being part of that duology, she's also written a whole series of books that are sort of in the same universe, same world. And I think they are interconnected. Don't plan on reading them because yikes, major yikes. Yeah, it's like an Irish mythology retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And it's, it's so bad. Like I, based on this cover and based on the, that being the premise, um, and I had seen generally good things about it. I thought I was gonna really like it. And I was like, so excited because she has like, kind of a lot of books out. And I was like, oh, good. I have a bunch to read. Ooh. Question number seven is what was your favorite series finale of the year? News of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This is the second book in the Strange the Dreamer duology. Is that what the duology is called? I don't even know. But uh, yeah, that duology. Um, if you saw my review of Strange the Dreamer, you'll see, you'll know, or if you've read it, because it's kind of spoilery, my reasons for docking it a star. I would have given Strange the Dreamer five stars if not for a certain thing that happens at the end, like a, a kind of like a reveal or a twist or I don't know what to call it. But if you've read it, then you know, if you saw my review, then you know, I don't want to say it because it's spoilery. Um, but that reveal ramifications of that reveal are obviously present in the second one. But I was ready for it. Like I was going into it knowing that that would be the case. So I was prepared. And so like, I don't think it's necessarily better than Strange the Dreamer. I just wasn't mad about the reveal because I already knew about it. It might be better than Strange. No, it's not better than Strange the Dreamer. But I did give it five stars because I was already prepared for that reveal. Anyway, <laughs> that's super coherent. This was a really good finale. Um, it wrapped everything up beautifully. It wasn't, was it perfect? No. But overall, like I read it in one sitting. I was like, I wasn't like weeping, but I got teary eyed about a few of the things because I mean, Eleni Taylor's writing is so just filled with emotion and imagery. And I really, really loved the characters, mainly Laszlo, but I like the other characters too. And it's just, it's really beautiful. It's so beautiful. Everything she writes is like the prose is really beautiful, but there's just something magical about Strange the Dreamer. Like I love the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, which I read this year. And I like probably some of the characters in Daughter of Smoke and Bone better, but Strange the Dreamer everything about it, the pros, the characters, the world. It's just pure magic. Honestly, it just is just so magical. I don't think I've ever read anything quite that magical. Like when I think of fantasy, this is as purely fantasy as I think I've ever read anything. And this ending was really beautiful. So musical nightmares. Okie dokie. Question number, what was it? Eight? Oh my god. We're only on eight. There's 15 questions, so... Buckle up. Question number eight. What was the biggest cliffhanger you had in a series this year? Oh, God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. Oh my God. This man is the biggest troll on the planet. I'm not even kidding. I'm literally not kidding. At the end of God's Grave, other authors have series that have a cliffhanger. Other authors have books that have a cliffhanger. Jay Kristoff has a cliffhanger. And then, and then you turn to the next page. Maybe I can read it to you. I don't think it's spoilery. I think it's just him being a fucking troll. Okay, a couple of things are kind of... Okay, I'll, I'll read the parts I can. Because he's a fucking troll. So you finish reading it. Last page, it ends. Giant fucking cliffhanger. And you're like, what? And you flip the next page because you're like, there's still text on it. So there's more. And it just says, no. I hear you say the word as if I sat in the room beside you. I see you bent over the tome in your hand with a frown on your face and a curse on your lips as if I were puddled in the shadow at your feet. The realization that there are no more pages is sinking in now. I hear it. I see it. No, you say again. What of lists things from the story? All these questions unanswered and yet the book is at its end? No, you say. It cannot end like that. Fear not, little mortal. The song is not yet sung. This is but the calm before the crescendo. This tale is only two of three. Earth and life and death. So patience, gentle friends, patience. Close your eyes. Take my hand. 
and walk with me. And then he fucking postponed the release of the third book because I read this in, I think, like, February or something. And I was like, Ugh! But I was like, it's fine, it's fine. I can wait until like, October or November when it was supposed to come out, Dark Dawn. And then it was postponed. And I was like, you're so evil. Why? <laughs> Anyway, it's really good. I'm really excited to read Dark Dawn when it comes out. Fucking, if I'm still even alive then. <sighs> anyway. Fuck you, Jay Kristoff. Like, you're the best human. But also, fuck you. Alright. That's pretty emotional. Question number nine. What is your favorite spinoff series that you read this year? Um, <laughs> this isn't cheating, but... Six of Crows by Lee Bartugo. I read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom uh, before I even started a booktube channel and before I read the Grisha trilogy. Um, I read the Grisha trilogy this year and then also reread Six of Crows. So, I mean, technically Six of Crows is the spinoff from the Grisha trilogy. So to me, it feels like I read a spinoff of Six of Crows when I read the Grisha trilogy. So I kind of wanted to pick Grisha for that. I was like, Six of Crows is better than Grisha. And Six of Crows is technically a spinoff. And I did technically read it this year, even though I read it before I read Grisha and then again after. So Six of Crows by Lee Bartuko. Question number 10 is, what is your most anticipated next book in a series that you read this year? What? Okay. What is your most anticipated next book in a series that you read this year? Because it's the series that you read this year that will come out next year. Okay. As we, as we already covered, Dark Age by Pierce Brown, which was supposed to come out this year. Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff that was supposed to come out this year. But then also a new edition, which is The Spider, the sequel to The Wolf by Leo Carew. So... That's less of, it's a newer discovery and less time to wait because I believe that's supposed to come out in April. Before Dark Dawn. <sighs> anyway, it's fine. Dark Age was supposed to come out this past fall. Then it was supposed to come out next February. Now it's supposed to come out next July. Just better fucking come out anyway. Ugh. Yeah. Dark Age, Dark Dawn, and The Spider. I mean, I have others too. I feel really like guilty about not listing other books. Like I want to read the sequel to The Furyborn, Kingsbane. Um, I already read Wicked King, so that would be anticipated if I... Excuse you, gardeners. Anyway, um, yeah, Wicked King would be anticipated, but I already read it because my friend lent me her arc. <laughs> um, yeah, and then King of Scars isn't technically a sequel. Like, it's another spinoff. But yeah, those. Um, question number 11. What is your most anticipated series to catch up with next year based on what you read in the series this year? We have two for this. Um, Witcher by Andrzej Sapkowski. Um, I kind of thought that I might actually finish Witcher by the end of this year. I don't think so now. Maybe I will. I have like two and a half more to go if you don't count the one that just came out, which I'm still confused about what that is. I haven't really looked it up. I just know there's a new Witcher book and I'm like, is this a continuation, a novella, a spinoff? What, what is this? Anyway, of the ones that were previously like the Witcher series, I think I have like two and a half to go. So I will definitely finish that, if not this year, next year. Witcher. Whenever I finish it, I'll probably film a video about the Witcher series. And then The Raven Cycle, which I thought I was going to finish by the end of the year too, because I had started the, the first one like four months before the end of the year, and there's four books, so I was like one a month, and then I'm not even done with the second one yet. I, I was reading it actually yesterday, because I was like, I want to finish that, and then I watched Brave instead. Anyway, Witcher and... I don't know why I decided not to hold up the book. Witcher. <laughs> I brought it fucking over here. Anyway, Witcher. And the Raven Cycle. This is the one I'm on right now. The Dream Thieves. Okay. Question number... What are we on? 12? What is your favorite series that you finished this year? Oh, started and finished. That's not the question, but that is true. The First Law Trilogy. Ow, my foot's asleep. Okay. First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. This series is so dark, but I love it. I read the first book in the first law trilogy, The Blade Itself, years ago, and I did not like it because I was a more, ooh, I don't say hopeful reader, but like I was looking for more fluffy fantasy at the time. Like I was in my like sort of truth phase where I wanted like heroes and like a moral to the story. I'm not that way anymore. <laughs> So this super hit the spot the way it didn't before and the audiobooks knock it out of the park. Like the guy reading the audiobooks, he definitely adds something. He doesn't just like do it justice, he adds something 
to the experience of it. So I do recommend, I'm not, not just reading the series, but I recommend experiencing them as an audiobook if you're into audiobooks. Like if you really can't do audiobooks, then just read them. It's fine. But he does a lot to like bring the characters to life um, and a lot of attention to detail. Like my favorite, favorite, favorite part is that Sandan Glockta, um, that character, he uh, is already my favorite character because, oh my god, he's like the actual worst, but like also hilarious. He's the saltiest, curmudgeoniest, bitterest, most sarcastic, most ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real gem of a person. Anyway, Sandan Glockta was tortured before this book starts. Um, he starts, like, when you meet him, he's he was previously a prisoner of war, and, like, everything is broken. That's why he's so curmudgeon because his whole body is a mess, because he barely survived being tortured. And part of the torture was that a lot of his teeth were pulled out. So it says in the book that he has a slight lisp when he talks. Like, not a full-on lisp, but, like, a slight lisp, because he's missing a lot of his teeth. And so the author, not the author, the, uh, the audiobook narrator, um, for the portion that's narration, he just reads in like his interpretation of Sandan Glockta's internal monologue, his normal voice, or the way he would have sounded before, because the way we sound in our heads is different from how we really sound. So he sounds like Glockta probably used to sound. But then as soon as there's dialogue, when he's speaking Glockta's dialogue, he adds a slight lisp to his um, pronunciation of the words, which it just, it's so spot on and it's so perfect and it honestly makes Glock to sound even more sarcastic. It's fabulous. I love it so much. Anyway, uh, yeah, this series is not for everyone. It's super dark, super bloody. It's like the definition of grim dark fantasy. Like literally, if you like, if you looked up the def, like grim dark fantasy in a dictionary, I think it would just be a picture of this trilogy. So uh, if you're into that, I recommend it. Okay, we getting into the home stretch. I think there's only like three questions left, and I don't have an answer for one of them, so you're off the hook. Um, yeah, the next question I don't have an answer for. What is your favorite episodic series of the year? I think episodic series is more like um like murder mysteries and stuff. Like Poirot is a series, but they're each kind of standalones within the series. I guess I used to read a lot of Nancy Drew. I didn't read it this year though, so but that's like, yeah, I don't really read those kind of books. I read epic fantasy series. So I don't have one for these. I should read more diversely. I won't, but I should. Question number 14 is what is a series that you finally bailed on after holding on to for a long time? Oh, I'm ready for this. Akatar series by Sarah J. Mass. I have successfully gotten rid of every Sarah J. Mass book I have. Except for I have this and another, I have a paperback of this, I have this paperback and I have a paperback of A Court of Wings and Ruin and that's it. Um, I'll probably get rid of those too. It's handy though for holding up in tag videos. I might just keep the one for that reason, get rid of the other one just so I can hold it up as a prop. Um, or not, who cares? It was literal garbage. Um, FS. This series, like, it was fun before, like, I had fun reading it. It was never good. But like it was super enjoyable. And I think I gave originally this book five stars because in retrospect, like it's, <laughs> it's so many issues and I used to spend a ton of time picking it apart. But my rating, my enjoyment level was at a five on this one. The other two books in the series were like threes. This one, like it had a lot of emotional stuff in it that just like hit the spot and was really bingeable. And I was like five out of five for reading enjoyment experience. But I have a whole video about how toxic I feel like the fandom is and how I'm just like super over it. And honestly, like it was fun and then it was kind of problematic and then it just became like toxic and stressful. And I don't, I can't even enjoy it anymore because I'm just like, it's just, there's just too much there. So I, I know she's gonna re write more books in the series, but I don't like any of the other characters. And I hated the novella that came out that's supposed to be bridging the gap. I don't know what gap that was supposed to bridge. Supposed to bridge the gap in her wallet. Um, yeah, so no more of this. And the last question, we made it, is what is a series you were most surprised you liked this year? I could not get over how shook I was that I did not hate <laughs> Shatter Me by Tahita Mafi. I filmed a whole video or a, a vlog of me reading this book for the first time, expecting to hate it, but I was like super curious because I'd heard that it's, it's quite polarizing and it's very 
different in the way that it's written, like the style of the prose and everything. So I was like, I don't think I'm gonna like this, but I'm super curious. So I filmed a vlog of me reading it, which is, you can like watch my progress of being like, this is garbage to like, okay, but it's like kind of interesting. It's still garbage, but I'm curious. And then I was like, oh, I'm super into it now. So like, it's not my favorite. And it's like by no means like a five out of five stars or anything, but my shock at not hating it probably also boosted its star rating for me because, you know, having really high expectations being disappointed will affect things and vice versa. So if I, I had never expected anything, someone just handed me this book sight unseen, never heard of it before and said, read it. Well, I probably would have DNF'd it because the beginning is not good. But if I had for some reason pushed through because like I had a friend or something that was just like, I require you to read this whole thing. <laughs> I don't know why that would happen. But in this scenario, it's happening. I don't know. I probably would have given it like three to four. I don't know. Because I was, by the end, I was quite enjoying it. And it is very original. So originality alone often wins points with me. Even if I don't like something, if I think it's really original, I'll be like, good job. <laughs> you did something I haven't seen before. And I don't, that's impressive by itself, even if I didn't enjoy the experience. So it is quite original. And the style of the prose is, is not always for me. Sometimes I think it's clever. Most of the time I think it's obnoxious and stuck up its own ass. But it's definitely different. So again, originality wins a lot of points with me. That does it for the best and worst of the year in series tag thing. I don't remember what it's called. Something like that. <laughs> I feel like Mara tagged pretty much everyone that I would normally tag. So I might cheat and do the whole, I tag you if you feel like doing it. If I think of somebody while I'm editing that I really want to see do this tag, then I'll tag them down below. But yeah, I don't know. It's the end of the year. By the time you see this, it won't be too late to film it anyway. So do it if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me know in the comments down below your thoughts about these series if you've read them, about your answers to these questions, about my if you agree with me or disagree with me about my opinions about the books that were aforementioned. Did I use that word right? Aforementioned? I think that's right. Something you see. Yep, anyway. <laughs> Uh, if you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're even still watching, this video's gotta be like freaking forever long. Anyway, we'll see you in my next video. Bye.